Um, we'll get out a quick go through quick interrupt introductions first. All right, let's see. Uh, Sam, why don't you go first? Sure, I'll be glad to interrupt. So, uh, Sam English with uh, University of South Carolina. How's that for brief? Is that good? Very, very good. Thank you, right. Michael Mino. Hi, Michael Mino, uh, associated with a few different programs. Uh, the one that's showing here is the What's Brewing, although um, Courtney and I have had some conversations and that uh, perhaps the city would be a great place for the program. But I also had a conversation with Paul Clark today at uh, um, Venture South, and I really didn't think about it. So I'm going to talk to Charlie as well if Courtney's got uh, cold feet um that might be another good home for it so okay great thank you let's see um earl earl gregory's general uh general manager yeah that's a blast from the past <laughs> uh Green <laughs> greenville area manager for the small business development center so um i'll try that other one again some other time <laughs> <laughs> okay all right very good thank you steve johnson Steve Johnson, South Carolina Research Authority. There's a logo right there. Uh, investment manager, uh, primarily in the upstate, although if it's life science, uh, I'm around the state. So hello, everybody. Great. Good. Um, Marco. Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm Marco Rios. I'm the Spanish business consultant at the SBDC. Excellent. Very good. Glad you're here, too. KSL. So hello everyone, I'm Case, <clears throat> Executive Director for Vision Greenwood, and you may wonder what in the world is Vision Greenwood, but we are a, a nonprofit organization focused on community development, and one of our major initiatives is innovation and technology, and so we um, launched the brew in our community, and it's really about economic development and finding those gaps and shortfalls in the community and finding solutions for them. So broadband is another big area that we've been focused on as well. So thank you. And you do the code? SC codes, correct. Yeah, everyone um, bring with that area. Okay, all right, excellent. Courtney, have you been on this call before? Um, I was on the last one, yeah. Uh, that okay, was the first right. one. If you'll introduce um, yourself quickly sure. then. Okay, I'm Courtney Ashley. I'm the Economic Development Marketing Manager for the City of Greenville. Okay, great, thank you. Justine. Oh, wait, we can't hear you. Oh, no. I turned it on, then I turned it off. <laughs> hey, everyone. I am Justine Allen with 10 at the top. Great. Thank you. Um, John Blomberg, you have been on here before, so please. Yeah. So, John Blomberg, I'm the area manager, SBDC for the Rock Hill area, and I teach entrepreneurship at Queens University and at Winthrop University. Great. Thank you. All right. So, now to all of our new folks. Where do I start? I'm going to start with Mark Roth. Mark, if you could um, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Hello, I'm Mark Roth. Uh, I work at the Clemson University Research Foundation in business development. And happy to be here. Well, and what have you been doing before this? Uh, I uh, ran the SIMT, the Southeastern Institute of Manufacturing and technology for Florence Darlington Technical College, and also uh, was in charge of their workforce development. Great. Well, we're very glad to have you here, and welcome to the Upstate. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Good. Craig, you turned your thing off, and you became next. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I just didn't want to forget and be the mute person. All right. My name is Craig Sharton. Um, I am a self-employed business coach, as well as a revitalization and economic development consultant. Um, I have just moved to Greenville in June, and um, I moved from Fresno, California, where I've been uh, the economic development director for the city. Um, I started two business incubators. I taught entrepreneurship at Fresno State for 14 years. Uh, and I've done a whole bunch of stuff related to revitalization um, all throughout the state of California. And I currently have business coaching clients in California and in Greenville. Great, Craig. And we're very glad and to have Spart you. Spartanburg too. And Spartanburg as well. Well, we're very glad to have you here. 
Let's see, I saw somebody come on. Uh, well, Giovanni. Hello, everyone. And I apologize if the sound is off. I'm driving back from Columbia from a board meeting. So I am Giovanni Calisi. I am a business professor at Anderson University. I teach the new product development classes, and we have a couple of new entrepreneurship programs we're about to uh, kick off, which I'll be overseeing. So I'm looking forward to hearing more about you guys. And to my friend out west, I came so close to going to Fresno State. That's great. Well, Giovanni, we heard you just fine. And for folks who don't know, Anderson University has, um, I guess maybe three or four years ago, launched the data science program. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. In the last, um, many of you know Steve Nail, who's our dean. And since he came on board, we're revitalizing a number of our programs to be more analytical driven. Great. Good. Giovanni, thank you so much. Um, Serge, we'll continue the uh, academic piece of this. Hi, everyone. This is Serge Afeli here. I am a tenured associate professor of pharmacology at Presbyterian College School of Pharmacy. We are in Clinton, South Carolina. I don't know if you guys know where that is, but uh, we somewhere. Uh, and I'm the director of innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, so I've been here for the last 10 years or so and happy to be here. Great. Good, Serge, and I will brag on you just a little bit. We're talking about pitching, mm. and uh, the first time that uh, Serge took a team to a competition, why don't you tell them the competition and what happened? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, <laughs> 2019, just before COVID, we took a team of students up to Boston at MIT uh, to compete in the MIT Grand Hack Medicine. Um, and uh, we ended up winning uh, one of the prizes uh, that was there. There was about 600 participants. Okay. Students coming from MIT, Harvard University, Boston, UCLA. It's a it's an international competition that brings a lot of people from across the country. So, yeah. Good. Well, Serge, we are very glad that you're here as Thank well. You. All right, let's see. Um, Jennifer, would you introduce yourself, please? Yes, good afternoon. My name is Sienna for Santos and I work with the city of Greenville. I work with the communications department and I also support the economic development team with Courtney Ashley. Great. We're very glad you're here too. And then Kevin Weir, if you just quickly introduce yourself. Oh, there you are. Hey, so uh, yeah, Kevin Weir. <clears throat> I work with uh, Earl. Who else is on here? Marco and John. Um, taking care of uh, technology-based companies for the SBDC. Very good, thank you. Have I forgotten anybody? I joined a little bit oh, late, uh, just quickly. Oh. Um, <laughs> on. No worries, I came from another meeting, so that's okay. Uh, I work for Next, I am the uh, Startup Success Manager, and Next is a nonprofit entrepreneur support organization dedicated to helping uh, startups grow in the uh, upstate. And uh, I just kind of, I, I joke that I'm a concierge for startups for our ecosystem, but then um, to a certain extent, I work with a lot of the other individuals on this call in uh, connecting them with those resources. Very good. Peter, thank you. And I'm sorry, you're kind of in the lower left corner. <laughs> That's okay. You can, you can hide in the lower quadrants. And I was trying to, <laughs> to sneak by. Oh, my goodness. But I'm very glad that you're here. Um, let's see, Brian from... Um, Com uh, not Converse, from Wa uh, not Wofford, uh, from Furman. He said that he was sorry he could not make it. And um, then there was someone else. Oh, Amy Robichaud as well. And I have some comments from them about our topics. All right. Does anybody have any questions for each other since we just learned about each other? I have a quick one. Mm -hmm. It's very important, Kevin Weir, how many days till retirement? <laughs> <laughs> um a lot more than Erin. <laughs> oh no that's just not even right <laughs> i could probably start the camera on, on just I, a i'm reconsidering because i love my job so, uh, so much uh, working with uh, mark these days on sbirs and steve getting all the funding life is good so why would i want to retire same as Erin. She's reconsidering too. I think she uh, will. <laughs> yeah. Just a slightly different role. Different role. Um, 
Dean, I know is betting that I'm staying, but that is not going to be the case. Um, all right, good. The um, we we're talking continue our conversation about. Um, sorry, this this the flight really distracting me. Um, we're continuing our discussion about um, our entrepreneurs understanding how to um, just present their business idea. Um, when we when we were on the call a few. Well, last quarter, um, we were the funders were talking about deficiencies in um, in the founders, and you know a common comment was that they just can't pitch. Um, another common comment was that they don't understand the process of being funded um, through outside funding in the diff and the terms and the um, and and then the and then the financials the financial statements that go along with that. So we, at the end of our conversation, decided that we would work on um, the elevator pitch. And very generously, Michelle Willis raised her hand to say that she would start to gather information if you would send information to her. Uh, Michelle could not be here today, but Courtney, do you want to kind of talk about what she has received? And um, yeah, sure. So thank you um, to everybody who has shared information with her already. Um, this is something that Michelle and I have actually been working on since I joined the city in um, May is basically just trying to get that pipeline ready for people that it's so it's a little less stressful. Um, as all of you know, it can be very difficult and very overwhelming for an entrepreneur to start, um, especially if they don't have any experience in this world. Uh, so we're trying to come up with several different formats uh, so that someone who's more of a visual learner, we can create kind of like a pitch example video for them. Um, and then we've also, we're working on creating a PowerPoint and then just putting all of the resources that we have available onto the UCAN Greenville SC website. Um, so everything's all in one location. Great, Courtney, thank you. And this will be information that we can all attach to our websites as well, um, individually, as well as part of the Start Grow site. So we appreciate the city of Greenville um, offering y'all's time and some website pay space for that. Um, Merle liked it and gave it the go ahead. So, so that's great. So the content that you have received, have, have you seen any kind of consistencies or anything with that? Um, a little bit. It's kind of been more tailored to each individual organization, which is obviously to be expected. Um, so we're kind of trying to take everything and make it more generic. Um, and then the idea behind it was that you've got a kind of a generic pitch. And then once they figure out kind of the direction that they're going in, then we can tailor into specifically what they need. So, you know, they've got their, their business plan set up. And then if they are struggling with funding, for example, and then we can send them in one direction. So we're kind of trying to set it up as a, if this, then that. Um, so everyone has their own way of doing it. Uh, so we're kind of just trying to reinvent the wheel and not, you know, create something new from scratch. It's not, you know, anything, you know, crazy revolutionary, but we're, we're just trying to make it more simple and easy to understand. So it's not as overwhelming. Would you like input from anyone here? I will take all the input that I can get always. Well, how do y'all think that we could best, um, help Courtney? I can't believe nobody has anything to say. <laughs> Y'all are like such a vocal group. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was going to mention that um, the, the strategy I use for the clients is who are you pitching to? So if it's SC Launch, they have a very nice kind of structure that they send first. And I've um, uh, consumed that and uh, use it for most of my clients because the majority are, uh, are going through SC Launch. So I align with what their needs are and use their structure. That's online. And I think it's a really good and um, way. It's got a good flow and all the points are covered. And then if it's Venture South, then it's slightly different, but it's basically the same. So maybe one thing is just to take the best of those pieces and just piece it together and say, that's what we're going to run. Whatever the main places are that our clients are getting their funding from. Mm -hmm. is to use what they need so that it's directed and that they get what they're expecting when they when they come in so when they come and pitch so that, that i would just mention that did courtney mention when it'll be up because probably we can be provide more direct feedback once we were to look at it and i assume it's not up yet right 
It's not. Um, so for those who don't know, Michelle, who um, volunteered to take on this project, has decided <laughs> to abandon the city. And she's actually going to work for the Rear Development Corporation. Her last day is actually on Friday. Um, so we're trying to figure out staffing changes and who's going to take that over. Um, Jennifer, who's on the call right now, is uh, going to be pretty involved with it, too. So we're kind of in an up-in-the-air transition phase. So can't give you an exact deadline yet, but I know as soon as something is put together, um, we will definitely be sending it out to this group to get more feedback. Well, certainly draft state draft documents. I'm sorry? It's certainly draft Yes, materials. yeah, and I think Michelle said that she was going to try to upload everything and send it to you, Erin. Um, so okay. she hasn't shared that with me yet, but I'll ask her to, um, to put everything in one place so we can kind of tackle it together. All right, excellent. And, I, you know, um, Craig, I'm sorry, Kevin, you make a really good point about um, each different organizations having different requirements. So maybe that's something is to just have links to SCRA. Here is yeah. their um, their template. Here mm -hmm. is Venture South's template. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and we will we will be glad to share what SC Launch and SC Launch Inc. looks for for either membership or grants or an investment. And and we are open that um, if anyone says, hey, you ought to consider adding or deleting this, we're open to that kind of thing as well. We work closely with Venture South uh, because we frequently co-invest with them. And so our decks are almost identical, as Kevin said. But we're open to suggestions for uh, ways that you think we can improve it as well. I think one thing we also should consider, uh, especially since we brought up the points of, you know, people not understanding their financials and people not understanding the language and so on behind all this, let's not focus too much on the format of the deck. Let's focus a little bit more on the preparations before the deck. Um, what, what I find out when I go to these contests and these pitch uh, events, the owner does a great job of going through the deck and being able to tell you what's on the slide and, and, and a little bit about it. But the real knowledge and the real test is after the deck's done and they start fielding questions from the judges, right? And if they don't know the numbers, they don't know how they arrived at the stuff that's on the deck, they're sunk at that point. So maybe a little more, more focus on pre-deck preparations than the deck itself. Very good point. Good. Sam, any thoughts? Are y'all going to be having some requirements? Yeah, and, and unfortunately, we don't have any of the Venture South guys or folks on the, the line here, but um, they do a really nice job of you know, getting ready to get ready, if you will. Uh, they, they've got some nice materials. I don't know if they're still out on their website or not, or maybe if it's from some of their uh, workshops, perhaps. Um, but they've got um, a nice repository, if you will, really kind of an outline of, you know, here's the things that people are going to be asking you about if you're, particularly, obviously, if you're approaching uh, an, an investor or wanting to, to look at financing. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I kind of would use them maybe as a, a nice uh, resource because they've already got that. And, and again, I'm, I'm speaking on their behalf, I guess, yes. uh, teeing them up, but I know they've already got those materials uh, and they've got it in a digestible format already. Um, so just a thought. Good. And Paul sent all that um, to Michelle way early on. Great, so, great. Uh, because they do have uh, what I would probably say some of the most, the, the largest breadth of material and depth. Mm -hmm. um, Peter, how about y'all? I, I really echo, you know, th there's a couple points that we made thus far about the audience in particular that's being pitched to. I, I can't remember who said that to begin with, but knowing your audience and what they're looking for. And a, another element that I, I always stress for our startups is that it's easy to completely lose track of the personal or emotional side of the element or the, uh, of the presentation. And I know numbers are important, 
but we kind of try to, you know, encourage the fact that there is a personal story, you know, investors or, or approving bodies still want to know why the individual is going to be capable of doing the project they're taking on, as well as why they're going to be committed and whether that's them or their co-founders or their advisory board, but uh, to a certain extent, not to lose the you know emotional component and the uh, personal story side of things. But I think everything that's been shared so far has been pretty spot on, and uh, I would agree with all of that. All right, good, Peter, thank you. So are y'all working on a how to pitch class? Uh, so next uh, recently launched a just an educational series in general that it, ideally and if not ideally it will include elements around pitching because that's uh, something that I want to help us just push forward in general. Um, I think that you know as as an ecosystem, I think a lot of you have probably seen that the kind of general understanding of what a pitch deck should look and feel like and what its importance is is maybe not as built into the community as it is in more mature markets. So our educational series is, is somewhat 101 level classes that all fall within four categories of, um, I think we have branding and sales, leadership, uh, operations, which includes legal. And um, of course, I'm gonna butcher the last one. Uh, it'll come to me in a second, but um, we're doing at least one of these a month. We've done one so far. Our next one is in um, mid-November. Uh, and where our cadence is once a month, um, having a, an expert, either uh, a founder who is you know, sharing a personal story with a focus on one of those topics, um, or somebody who's you know, gonna teach a class on pitch decks, and then usually provide the opportunity to have a 201 smaller class uh, if there's an interest around it. But that is uh, the educational uh, content is what, something that we're focused on now, and it will include pitch deck uh, methodologies. Yeah. Is that done online, Peter? We actually have them in person, um, and if you're a member, if you're on our newsletter, so if you just go to the, the next website, um, connect with us, you'll get added to our um, our general newsletter, and we actually just sent one yesterday, so anyone who's not on that newsletter, I can follow up and send you uh, the message, but we have an Eventbrite. We take the first 50 people who sign up for the seats. We encourage it to be um, founders first and foremost, um, so while we want ecosystem partners there, we also want the, the majority of the seats to be filled by founders, that's you know easier said than done, but um, they're in person because um, we want to encourage the, the Q and A and the kind of interaction element. Because the number one goal for us is that each one of those sessions um, results in actionable feedback for the founders, so that there's a direct you know I went to go see the sales pitch. I now know four things I need to do for my sales team, or you know if we have a pitch deck one, I got to work on my pitch deck coming out of this, and I have three or four key things to focus on to change. Um, but they are all taking place thus far at the next innovation center on church and university ridge good peter thank you sarah do you have anything you want to add uh well i think what has been said before is right on point like uh, peter mentioned earlier uh it was something that came to mind i was listening to uh what is important when it comes down to pitches of um one of one factors um, that maybe companies should insist on is who constitutes, who is on the team. Uh, I was uh, last week uh, in Triangle Park, in North Carolina, at a, at a conference, a small conference forum, uh, where, where there, there were some venture capitalists. You know, we're discussing, you know, what do company needs to have in place in order to attract the most, uh, you know, to be attractive to the eyes of the uh, venture capitalists, of the investors. And some of the, one of the things that came out was uh, have a place uh, to push this project forward. So uh, companies, um, you know, get ready for the, for the presentation, things like that. Maybe we should think some uh, outlining the strength of the team that is working on the project. Uh, and then the more diverse that team is, the better it is. So that's my... Sarah, you're breaking up a little bit. And the, I don't know if you broke up for everybody else, but did uh -oh. you say that they were looking to make sure that the team is in place, the right team's in place to be able to push it forward? Yes, the right team. So one of the things that the investors, the, the VC people are looking for uh, is to see, make sure that the right team are able to make the project of the business sustainable on the long run. Okay. Uh, and so as 
people pitch the ideas to the investors i want to make sure that i just spend some time talking about hey we have a diverse or you know well-balanced team of you know people working together in order to make an institution in order to make to make this successful and also those who are part of that team should have a credential the experience necessary in order to uh, make the project a reality i think that can make a big difference good Serge, thank you very much i can tell there's new people on the call because y'all are all being so polite and <laughs> not speaking on top of each other <laughs> which you normally do <laughs> so so i uh, rather than me calling on everyone does anybody have anything else they want to add and just unmute and start talking so i think that'll be fine Sam. Sure. If, if, okay. if I could jump in there and uh, let me uh, play off what Serge was just talking about, about the team, you know, part and, and unfortunately, I think part of pitches these days is kind of there, there are different schools of thought of pitches uh, and pitches are tailored or sometimes or most of the time tailored for an event. Right. So you've got a you know, those really short three minute, five minute pitches um and then you've got a longer format which then gives you more flexibility so part of it is figuring out what really is your strong selling point <laughs> and for some uh, for some teams that literally is their team uh and so part of it is being able to to highlight whatever their usp is right so whatever their strong suit is um and and so you know so while a a um generalized pitch deck um you know it's going to talk you know are there real problems is it a real problem anyway etc cetera, etc cetera. um but part of it is also being able to surface what is uh unique about this particular opportunity and this team and and the and so being able to make those adjustments and sometimes that means bringing it all the way to the front right so not always starting with the problem you know 12.3 million people every second have whatever issue. Um, it's it's being able to literally kind of, of change, change, put it on its head, really. Yeah. So almost it sounds like that's a little bit like what Earl was saying, that you have to do understand ahead of time what the yeah. right talents and skill set and what what um are in order to accomplish. Kind of going that earlier. Um Mark, do you, know, do you want to say anything? Do you have anything to add? No, I think they've everybody's covered it. And <laughs> good to go. Okay. Just know that you always have competition. I hate it when people pitch and they go, who's your competition? They go, oh, nobody. It, everybody has competition. So, Craig, I see you're unmuted. Um, so a couple of things after prepping people to pitch and then have them doing poorly when we got them to the uh, angel network or whatever, I tried to find a few different ways to get them to practice. And one of them was to practice in front of potential funders, but not have it be about pitching them for funding, that I would have them pitch to try to get questions from them. So every time they got a question from a funder, we would call that their bag of gold. Um, the other thing that we did is we put on a pitch showcase that was um, gamification kind of, uh, where we had funders and potential, potential funders and partners come in with play money. And the entrepreneurs actually had a pretty good pot of prizes um valuable like ip attorneys and marketing companies and things like that lined up and so their whole goal was to try to get as much money from these folks in kind of a fun way um it also exposed some of the funders to some of our entrepreneurs without feeling like uh, someone was trying to reach into their pocket uh, and it was also a way to get a whole bunch of entrepreneurs in the room all kind of pitching uh, and practicing pitching at the same time. So trying to get them to have a few different psychological experiences before we really put them out there for the competitions, uh -huh. um, since they seem, some of them seem to fold uh, once yeah. they got up to that point, even though they had really good companies. Good, good. Well, that actually is a very good segue 
Uh, thank you, Craig. But that's a that's a very good segue to kind of our next part of the agenda. But does any have want to have any last words about um, the content that Courtney is pulling together? Courtney, so, did anybody send you information from uh, Juan Garzon's pitch start approach? Juan, who leads Pitch Breakfast up in Charlotte? I don't think so. That's not familiar to me. Okay. I'll, I'll email that to you. Ron does a, a class on this. And for those of you who don't, don't know him, he leads Innovate Charlotte and Pitch Breakfast up in Charlotte. But um, he has a, a great class on pitching uh, based upon, I think he's sat through 800 or so different pitches and uh, has participated in pitching and judging and such. And his concept is uh, what makes a good pitch. And it's all about structure, clarity, and passion. And there's 10 specific questions that he loves to see in a pitch. Obviously, you tailor these to your audience uh, because not all pitches are uh, the same, you know, based upon who you're speaking with. But, Courtney, I can send you this PDF file that's basically his presentation with those 10 questions in it. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I'm about to add in my um, contact info into the chat, too. Okay, fantastic. Good. All right. Thank you. Good. And then, Courtney, as you try to sift through, please share that information out because we know that your your um, expertise is in communicating these things and our expertise is in how to get folks able to communicate it. <laughs> so, um, so please call on any or all of us in okay. a group, group email. Cool. Um, Sounds good. Good. So just thinking about, you know, we talked about kind of the end result, which is the final pitch, how do we give our entrepreneurs opportunities to practice? Because we know we have, Next has the launch pad, and then they have the Venture Summit. We know the Hill Institute has their um, undergraduate program, as well as something that they just did with funders in the room. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, let's see, Venture South. No, 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 Venture South. Um, the platform at Greer has their boot camp where people do pitches. Um, down in, there's the demo day where there are some pitches um, where people can practice, but there's also awards. So there's, you know, it's, there's, you have to have practice before you got there. Um, down in Charleston, there's the wild pitch, and then they have a small stage. We're practicing that too. Uh, well, for pitching, but how, y'all tell me, how do people how do founders get to practice and get feedback from practicing? If I could jump in, Aaron, um, one of the ways that I found to be most effective is really kind of a closed door safe environment um, for the entrepreneur, the founders to pitch to a group of experienced seasoned. They don't necessarily have to be angels or, or investors. Um, they're not being approached that way. This is more of, uh, it, it literally is for the, the purpose of pitching, getting to know the, the entrepreneur. And, and so it's a very safe environment. Mm -hmm. um, we, we used to run these things every, well, actually we were running, we used to run them quarterly, but then they ramped up and we'd run them every, uh, every month. So, I mean, it wasn't a huge lift and, and literally having, you know, four or five uh, folks uh, of uh, being able to provide questions and and get some feedback uh, to the entrepreneurs was really effective um, because, it, like I said, main thing was really establishing that safe environment where where they were they felt okay um, not not being perfect and and they were mm -hmm. in fact they were encouraged to just be themselves uh, in in that. So, how many entrepreneurs would would present each? Yeah, so in an evening, we'd, we'd usually run like three. Um, well, we'd schedule four. Inevitably, somebody would not, anyway, something would happen, but we'd usually have three. Uh, and at, let's see, all in, we'd probably block out like half an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. And then and then the judges, not judges, but then the, the group of folks, we, we would have a beverage afterwards or something. You know, there's got to be something in it for the, uh, for the, for the folks who, who uh, roll up their sleeves, right? Right. So, Sarah, oh, look, I was going to call on you when you uh, read it. <laughs> I would say my um, best advice I can give him is try by fire. 
just go out there and just can go pitch get embarrassed mm -hmm. you learn from that and then you get better and get better maybe by the 10 pitch you'll be you know you'll be there so just don't be afraid to go out there and then yeah. you know making a fool not really fool of yourself but you know practicing the craft because mm -hmm. until you get up in front of people and start pitching um it, it's not gonna get any better so yes yes so how do we facilitate the mm -hmm. entrepreneurs getting in front of people to practice so Aaron, you you just named off of quite a list there of venues or events that people could participate in <clears throat> i would i would say that the, the bulk of the people that i work with um as clients have no idea that there's that extensive of a network of pitching uh, opportunities around the state. Is there, poss is there a possibility that we could um, pull this together, this list together um, in such a way that it's not just a list, but maybe it's a circuit, right? It's a setup in such a way that, okay, here's the, here's the, practice you're not going to get any money but you're going to get a lot of feedback group of pitch venues here's the next step which is okay you might get some services if you win this one but you're not going to get a venture capitalist to show up on your doorstep and then there's the top tier ones that this is the big time you've made it there and then we can put these people in at the level that they are they can work their way through these this circuit so that now uh, they've really had not only the time to, to practice, but also they've gotten some benefit from it. And frankly, that gives us the opportunity for people within the ecosystem to also practice, so to speak, being the judge, being the prep, the preparatory side of this and so on. Okay. That's, that's an interesting way to think about that. I heard someone else say something. I would um, I would say too that uh, SCRA SC Launch has investment associates in both um, Greenville and Columbia. It is their job to feed the pipeline. It is their job to listen to those pitches and determine if they're a fit for us. Now, obviously. Um, we're in a, in a sector that requires that there be a technology piece to what they're doing. Uh, we don't do consumer products um, and, you know, there are limits, you know, to where we go. However, the investment associates, Daniel Gambrell uh, here in Greenville and Austin Saugus in Columbia, that's her job, is to feed the pipeline with early stage opportunities. And, and they are willing to listen to pitches and give them feedback, especially as it really relates to our deck. And many times they will provide them our deck and say, OK, this is what we're looking for. How did your idea fit into that? Mm -hmm. So. Steve, thank you. That's good to know. Um, one of the things that um, I've done is when someone says, I need I need help practicing a pitch, I'll just pull together a group of friends or, and um, then they'll pull in a few other people and we'll watch it virtually and provide feedback then and there. Um, very, very small lift to do something like that. Um, is, is there a way to start to systematize these just small lift um, practice opportunities before, you know, because Steve, I think it's great that Daniel and Austin are there, but I would be really concerned about sending an entrepreneur to them because they may not, who's not ready and who hasn't practiced. Um, that's like Peter sending somebody to um, VMS, to the mentoring program. Um, you know, if I was, sending somebody there's you know i would want to make sure that they were practiced before coming in um too um any thoughts mark how did y'all help people practice uh we brought them into the simt and, and ran them in front of a exactly what sam said just a small group of you know friends of the simt uh and help them with their pitch that way uh, it, it, 
to your point, it's not a big lift. There are enough people on this call today that, you know, if we had five a time, you know, you, you have, you know, it'd be every four months that you have to be sitting in front of some uh, entrepreneurs. It, it, uh, it, it's a good way. It's a safe way uh, to Sam's point, And uh, I just think that's a good thing to do. Mark, thank you. All right, is there anybody here who doesn't like to listen to pitches and give feedback? <laughs> so everybody, so so we know that we all like to do that. <laughs> and so the, I don't think there will be, do we know people who would be willing to share their time? Um, okay, yes, I mean, no. So, I would volunteer me. for something like that, but I think each of us would see ourselves it, at a certain level also, right? You know, I would not ever dream of putting myself on the stage at the next venture pitch competition. That's, I'm not in those circles, that's not me. But I would very much be, find myself, think myself useful to someone who's just getting their feet wet in this. They, they need that, that, the very underpinnings uh, to get started. I think I could lend value to that group. So, um, you know, if, if we were to set up a group, a test group or a, um, I don't know, uh, just, just, just this four or five people to volunteer, you know, I think if we did that and did a quarterly, uh, where we could put some people in front of that would also give us, like I say, the ecosystem, an opportunity to also improve our skills and move, the, move not only our clients, but ourselves up that ladder as well. Yeah, and I think that Earl and Kevin and the crew with SVDC does a great job in prepping companies before we see them. And if it means that like once a quarter, maybe this collective group, because there are a lot of organizations represented here, and we could perhaps rotate in three to four of us um, once a quarter, to listen to two, three hours of pitches just to give feedback, um, I'd certainly be willing to do that um, as long as they come prepared. And that means having worked on their pitch and having worked on their financials and uh, at least can have some understanding of what we would be looking for, not to be critical, and not to be, hey, your next step is you're going to be presenting before SCRA for a grant or investment, but really to give them feedback and understand it's, it's really to give them practice and a forum that uh, they shouldn't feel threatened in. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's easy enough to do. And if they connect with the information that the city of Greenville is putting together, that could be a pathway into uh, the practice program. Um, all right, so we also have Anderson and Clinton and Greenwood on here as well. So could y'all see this being done virtually? Well, actually, I, say I don't. I don't see any reason why not. Um, okay. You know, I, I think certainly, you know, given <laughs> given where we are these days, that that's you know, it, it, in, in fact, I mean, literally, we're running the pitches. It, the, the people are doing virtual pitches as part of the programs, and so um, why not? I mean, other than that beer on the back end, I did mention. I, I, <laughs> I, I don't want to lose sight of of that. I, you know, we all enjoy having a cookie at the end of whatever. Yeah. Well, maybe we can have like a, a, a fun event at the end of the year. Sarah, so you were going to say something. Oh, yeah, I think, yes. I think, of course, we can do it virtually. I think that would be the more practical way to do it. Uh, the other thing also is that maybe we can, as a team here, develop a rubric uh, for participants to say, hey, here are the five or six different um, items that we will be grading you on. Right. It can be a style, it could be flow, it could be idea and things like that. And then we compile those notes and then send it back to them uh, so that they can improve for next time. 
Um, I'm wearing a professor's hat right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, uh, uh, so my question is going to be Giovanni and Serge, do y'all have rubrics that you evaluate your students on already? Yes, we uh, we have uh, one for um, healthcare equity, you know, this uh, healthcare system. So you have to do like a presentation at the end of the the year about uh, advocacy on the healthcare issue. Mm -hmm. and I'll design your rubric for that, but we can adjust that to uh, um, our needs. So it's it's not something that okay. cannot change. So I have something that we can. Okay, and then Craig, in your years of teaching, just, do you have something? Oh, you're still, still, still muted. Yeah. I knew that was going to happen eventually. Um, I was putting my stuff in the chat there. Um, you know, part of part of what I noticed over the years is that we had some really bad companies with great pitching founders and some really great company, you know, and just and vice versa. Um, so I tried to do early coaching based kind of on their personality type a little bit. I'm not saying I did a personality analysis, but just basically to see who was comfortable with it or not. Um, and some of them really required a long ramp up to be able to get their pitch comfortable almost piece by piece over several weeks, where I had some guys that could just, you could practically make up a company name and they'd jump out and win the contest. You know, it was, it was, it's not really always the best way to gauge yeah. which are the great companies to invest in. So trying to work through that, that process, I think um, it was more coaching up front before we got to the point where we were putting them out in front of test groups and then eventually up in front of the contests or the actual uh, investors. So um, it has to be a little bit customized, I would, I would say. Okay. And, I, and Aaron, we have a very detailed scoring rubric that we evaluate companies on. It, it is it is very detailed. Uh, there are probably 50, 75 questions. But it, I could simplify that because I really can't, you know, share the details yeah. of that. But I can hit the the high points that we look for and the big no-nos that we look for. And I'll be glad to, um, you know, put a condensed version of that that's more manageable. Uh, we have to do that on every company that comes in to either pitch for membership, a grant, or an investment. And it's scored, you know, every every month. And so I'll be glad to do that. Okay, thank you. And, and y'all, Courtney, can we send these to you? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I'll kind of be the interim person until we figure out what the plan yeah. is moving forward. But yeah, I can, we'll all, you know, me and Jennifer, Jennifer and whoever ends up joining the team with us, we'll, um, I'll be working on it together. So yeah, I can be the um, the main point of contact for now. Thank you. Thank you. And let's not forget like what we talked about last time and what Earl continues to bring up. We still have to get the foundation in line and Craig brought that up too, you know, and so we may have different levels of presenting. And I think someone said that too, um, just to make sure that, and so, but let's just keep all of that in mind. Okay, we have eight minutes left. Um, let's just kind of, anybody want to say anything else real quick? Uh, just given the conversation, uh, would it be, um, helpful to think about executive summaries also right so like a two-page executive summary format you know just something to be, help uh, provide a little bit of framework also as as folks are thinking about it because it kind of goes you know it obviously related to uh, how do you tell the story of your company and what are the big blocks and, and anyway just just a thought along those same lines is the focus of this primarily for uh, pitches for investments, or are we talking about other types of pitches as well? Well, that's a very good question. Um, and I will need y'all to clarify if I don't say this correctly. It's the foundational pitching 
information to pitch and then how to, so that you can then switch it off for funders or for a lender or for a potential client or a potential partner employee or something like that. Is that? Yeah, that makes sense. And I okay. think that goes along with the statement about the uh, executive summary as well, because I think you, you have to keep your audience in mind. Okay. Okay, well, I um, thank you, John. And and we're also, I forgot to mention, we're also serving Union and Cherokee counties um, with this group. So, because John is over in those areas. Um, so, Michelle mentioned to me yesterday that a potential idea is to have people submit a, an executive summary and a video that we could independently evaluate and send back um, responses based on some kind of a rubric um, as another alternative. Um, and she went through the whole steps of how you would do that using Google Drive or Google Docs or Google Forms. And um, so I think this is easier than, than you know, this is pretty easy to do. Um, we can also just, it's the scheduling that's really the hardest part. It, well, it's the evaluating and the scheduling. So maybe the thing to do is the first few, well, all right, so the first few who come through have to be referred from one of your organizations. Does that seem like reasonable for a test? Well, as Peter will attest, that's the process in a way that we use for the next pitch contest in that we got a three-minute video from, um, what, 95 companies. Right. And, um, as long as they understand what we're looking for on that video. And it must be, there must be some structure to it. Yeah, but it does give us a glimpse of Number one, who the presenter is, uh, what they're talking about, how well they can communicate what they're talking about. Uh, but it was a way that we were able to screen from 95 entries down to 10. Mm -hmm. And um, it gave us eyes on the presenter and there was no pressure on them because they could basically do it with their you know, uh, smartphone and then send it to us. Peter, would fact, you? We, yeah, no, I would totally agree. And in fact, we encourage them to use <clears throat> their cell phone for that very reason was to remove a little bit of the, the barrier to entry. But what I would say, you know, to all of this, so I'm sure that it's you know, not a surprise to anyone on the call, the overarching intent and the structure of all of this is the most important. And for our event in particular, required a lot of input and a lot of handholding of those startups you know, from the first communication that went out, you know, we did a ton of research before we reached out to specific companies to ask them to to pitch. And so like any other kind of pitch competition or pitch methodology, like what it's for, what the ultimate goal is, what the what it's supposed to model. I mean, it's it's all different kind of across the board. You know, if it's a group of students versus if you're applying for SCRA and you have a very particular um, mold you need to fit. So I, I would just say like any kind of any I'm kind of, you know, speaking out, of, you know, just thinking out loud, but I do think that any kind of group structure that we would do would need to have a, a you know, some kind of foundation, some kind of expectations that are set that are kind of the barrier to entry that people know they have to do, you know, the baseline stuff to even, to even submit or participate. So long story short, that is a methodology we use. It worked. It was a lot of work and it required a lot of handholding to get people to uh, submit consistent uh, three minute videos that look similar to one another to make the review process easier. Hmm. When we were running the uh, event that I described earlier, like the, you know, the little pit, we used to call it pitch and polish anyway. And um, the requirement was that they actually submit an executive summary, their version. So take the guidance, develop an executive summary uh, and send it to us. Um, and we tried variations with a pitch deck, right? So send us a pitch deck. Uh, as well uh, on the front end, but that really was about all. So I mean, that was a pretty low, uh, pretty low barrier. Um, but it kind of gave us an idea of what level they were they were operating at. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So uh, y'all, we have two minutes left, 
I think we have lots to think about. Um, I will send out a summary and a copy of this. I will go ahead and tell you though, I am traveling and won't be back till next Wednesday. So um, if somebody wants to do this faster than me, <laughs> you're welcome to. Um, and but do, so but think about two things. One, what is the path to entry into into um, being scheduled for feedback? You know, what is that path to entry? I better make a note here. Um, and then I think the mechanics are pretty easy because um, it would do, we would just schedule them virtually um, and maybe that can be done through some kind of scheduling platform. Um, what was the second thing? Oh, the rubric. How do we how do we evaluate? Um, so so Serge, Giovanni, Steve, anyone else who has a rubric, please send it to um, Courtney and um, Earl and Marco. I think that these also provide opportunities for if someone needs help. They can we y'all can be there to work with those folks because the the uh, entry into y'all's programs is is very small, very low. Um, so meaning you accept everybody. So uh, so that's a thought, too. Um, the next meeting is um, the second Wednesday of the second month of the quarter at three thirty. Is that correct, Justine? I knew as soon as you said the next meeting, I thought, oh, goodness gracious. No, October. Yes, yeah, so October is the second month. And is this the second Wednesday or the third Wednesday? It's all right. So, well, it, whatever. For me, it's the second. Okay. So, sorry, sorry. I lied. Third, five, is 12, the third, the 19th. 19th. The, wow. So, the next meeting will be February, the third Wednesday at 3 30. Um, between now and then, or now and the end of the year, y'all will receive a year's worth of um, calendar invitations for that. And um, I know that um, the person running those meetings will be able to um, take this right from our point of discussion. Right here. So, okay. Anything else? Y'all, this was a lot to think about. Yeah. And welcome to all of our new people. Y'all were so quiet. <laughs> it's 4 <4:30. laughs> 30. Yeah, no, time to be done. <laughs> all right. Thanks, y'all. Have a wonderful week. Thanks, Aaron. Bye, everybody.